In this video, we're going to discuss the PR interval. Let's get started. So the PR interval is the moment in time between the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. This includes all of atrial depolarization, as well as the AV nodal pause or the PR segment. So the PR interval begins at the beginning of the P wave and ends at the very beginning of the QRS complex. So when you get that change in uh, polarity at the end of the PR segment. So what are we looking at? So the PR interval, again, it includes all of the depolarization of the eight uh, depolarization starts normally here at the physiological pacemaker, the sinoatrial node. And of course, it goes down these internodal conduction pathways across Bachmann's bundle over here to the left atrium and both the atria, every cell depolarizes, conducts excitable cells. They depolarize and pass on that conduction. The AV node is where that conduction kind of pauses before the depolarization continues down into the AV bundle, the bundle branches and the Purkinje fibers of the ventricles. So what you're seeing with the PR interval is depolarization of the atria and then the slight pause at the AV node to allow for the atria to eject all of its blood into the ventricles prior to ventricular depolarization and contraction. So normal PR interval ranges from 120 to 200 milliseconds or 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. It represents three to five small squares on a standard ECG grid or one large box would be the, the entire length of a PR interval uh, before it would be considered long. So what you would do is you would find, I'd like to find one close to a nice bold line, the P, the P wave falls on that bold line. Um, if it's uh, longer than one large box, it would be considered a prolonged PR interval. So what is a prolonged PR interval? Well, that would be your standard first degree AV block or first degree heart block. So you would call that a normal sinus rhythm with a first degree AV block is a prolonged PR interval. It's very common. You, you often see these and it's just a prolonged PR interval, meaning it's longer than one large box or 200 milliseconds or 0 0.20 seconds. Now, a short PR interval can be a little bit more of a cause for concern. A uh, short PR interval would be considered less than 120 milliseconds or 0 0.12 seconds. And it could be associated with uh, pre-excitation rhythms or a junctional rhythm. Junctional rhythm, not too much of a problem. Pre-excitation, uh, like Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, can be a significant issue uh, depending on the condition that the patient's in. So what you see here, this rhythm strip, you see a very short PR interval. So the P wave ends and then the QRS complex begins immediately. So there's almost no PR segment there. Uh, so that you've, you have a shortened PR interval. And then this actually continues into what we call a slurring upslope of the QRS complex, uh, which is called a delta wave. And that causes the QRS complex to be a little bit wider. And I'll explain the physiology behind that uh, here shortly. You could also have a variable PR interval. A variable PR interval can uh, exist with conditions like a Mobitz 1 AV block or Winky Bach. So with a second degree type 1 AV block, you get a prolonging of the PR interval before a dropped beat occurs. You'll get a P wave with no QRS. So you got what might be a normal PR interval and then a longer one. And then eventually you'll get a P wave with no QRS complex following it. So with that, you have a variability in the PR interval. So we mentioned Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. What is that? Let's talk about it real quick. So normally conduction from the atria all has to go through this guy, the AV node before going to the ventricles. With Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, you get a bypass or an accessory pathway from the atria into the ventricles. It's called the Kent bundle or the bundle of Kent. And that accessory pathway allows for depolarization to go from the atria to the ventricles without having to check in at the AV node. Well, remember what the AV node does is it kind of pauses that conduction to allow for ventricular filling. So if you think about it, when you go from the atria to the ventricles without going to the AV node, you're not going to pause and the ventricles will start depolarizing right away. But if it happens outside what we call uh, these fast lanes of conduction, and it goes from cell to cell to cell, as it does in this case, 
it's going to be a little bit slower. So it'll widen that QRS uh, as the depolarization continues into the ventricles from the accessory pathway. So with normal conduction, you get a nice P wave and a PR segment prior to the QRS complex. With WPW, you might have a P wave followed by that slurred upslope. Notice no PR segment. It goes right into the QRS complex. Uh, and we, this is called a delta wave. So you'll get a delta wave. And what's happening is you get, you're having normal conduction down the AV node as well as conduction down the accessory pathway. And that kind of creates this fusion beat, uh, which shows us the, the delta wave. You also get a widened QRS because of that cell to cell depolarization that's occurring from the bypass tract into the ventricles. And that's the discussion on the PR 